It's worth this. Yeah, but it's okay. All right, so uh, it's a pleasure here to have Kumar Bhatta to talk about the uniqueness of quantum gravity. So thank you for the invitation to give a talk here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the work with my student, Jacob McNamara, who's here somewhere. You're there. Uh, related to uh, interface between quantum gravity and topological phase of matter. So I hope you try to, even though the title may not suggest it, it's actually related to that. So uh, the basic idea is that in, in quantum gravity theories, we have learned that there's basically a unique theory we think there is, the string theory, M theory, whatever you call it. And it might start having different manifestations, but duality links them together. So you start with a different theory in 10 dimension, and then it becomes 11 dimensional, or another theory in 10 dimension, you compactify on a manifold, you get another theory equivalent to it. So there are dualities which connect everything together, if you go sufficiently down in dimension, we think. So we think by now that there is a unique theory, in some sense connected, which we call string theory, quantum gravity theory, which, um, which is connected. So if you compactify everything, so you come down all the way, so that you just have the time left over, times whatever the internal manifold is that you do. And if you start with one string theory and another string theory with, with different manifolds and different things, we think that there's a path that takes you from one to the other in some way, and there's some equivalence between them. So there's, there's a connected path, that there's one theory we're talking about. But there's no proof of this fact, of course. We just have evidence by these string dualities. <clears throat> Now, being able to go from one to the other through, the, through this, uh, if you think about this as like a, some kind of Euclidean time transforming from one to the other, is in some sense says that uh, if you compactify everything, the cobordism class of quantum gravity should be trivial. That's one way of thinking about this statement. But um, what one can ask is whether or not this is actually can be lifted to a more, more basic question of whether or not even if you look at pieces of this with decompactifying them, whether or not we can have a stronger statement of connectedness. So, uh, so it's natural to ask this question. Suppose you have a compactification of a theory on a d-dimensional manifold times some leftover space times time. So restrict to large macroscopic n plus one dimensional space time and ask whether or not they are connected or whether they form one set or what. We can still ask that question. Now, um, the, first, the natural question in this context would be, well, you start with your string compactification on some manifold what, with whatever structure it has, gauge fields, this and that, and you ask if there are different configurations that you can have, uh, which you can get to it, and that basically relates to studying cobordism classes to what extent they form independent classes that cannot be reached. So the study of how you can interpolate from one to the others, and getting these classes, the cobordism class of that corresponding theory, and so let me just denote that by omega of d, of whatever theory that you're starting with. So if you talk about some quantum gravity theory, it has some fields and so on, and you'll be studying the omega d, the d-dimensional uh, cobordism classes. Of course, these features prominently in the condensed matter setup when we talk about topological phases. These, these characterize having non-trivial classes are hallmark of describing some inequivalent topological phases. And what structure you put is what theory you take into account. What kind of symmetries you put, what kind of, whether you have spinners, or oriental manifolds, or whatnot, depends that that structure is there. And then you study the coordinates classes in various dimensions, and this gives you various topological theories. So this is a, this is a good old story. Uh, so the question is, what is the cobordism classes in the context of quantum gravity? Now, um, so just, just to set the stage, here you get the addition structure for the cobordism. You get an obedient structure. If you have such a thing, you say this one and this one go up to this one. If you have manifolds x1 and x2 going to x3, you will say the classes of x1 and x2 is equal to x2. So you have an addition law. So that's the group structure. Um, it has also the trivial element, which is if you have a manifold here, which can be a boundary of something. So if you have a d-dimensional manifold, which is a boundary of a d plus one dimensional thing, that class of that manifold would be zero. Okay, now suppose, suppose this omega of d of whatever structure that you have, suppose it's not zero. Suppose you have some kind of a class. I claim this simply leads to a symmetry. Well, the symmetry uh, is a theory, is a symmetry in a, in a form symmetry language, which is a high form symmetry, in the same sense that uh, we just heard from Zohar. 
So you start with a d-dimensional manifold, and if you cannot get rid of this class, whatever it, it goes to, you have to preserve it, that class. That means you cannot kill it off, so that gives you an independent way to say that there's no way to get rid of that particular class, it means there's a symmetry. You can just label that class, the class of the corresponding one, since there's no transformation that gets rid of it, there's a symmetry. And the, with the language that we would say is that there's a higher form symmetry corresponding to the form that you put over here. But unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, it's not possible to have uh, form symmetries in the quantum theory of gravity, the global symmetries, unless they are gauged. So we cannot have, we expect, we don't have a proof, but we have evidences that there cannot be a global symmetries. And so this better be a gauge symmetry. But let me actually explain why you cannot have global symmetries in a language which is adapted to this situation. Suppose there is this class and there's no problem with this. What will happen? Well, what will happen is the following. You take a d-dimensional space, just Rd, and take uh, your manifold Xd and glue it to a piece of Rd. So in other words, just imagine taking Rd and take a big sphere out of it, d minus one dimensional sphere, and attach it to the list of Rd. And then suppose this is next to a black hole, or if you wish a black string if there's external dimensions like this case. And suppose you throw this inside the black hole, and if this is not charred, if it's not gauged, there's no remnant of it outside, so you wouldn't see any gauge field outside. And after the black hole evaporates, you get rid of that charge, so that gives you a way to get rid of this class, unlike what I had said. Here I said there's no way to get rid of it, so therefore we kill the cobordism class. So the black hole will kill it. If nothing else kills it, the black hole will surely kill the cobordism class. So the quantum gravity theories will not be consistent if the cobordism class was not zero, but you can say, well, maybe it's gauge. Maybe there's a gauge symmetry. But that cannot be because I'm assuming, I didn't say it, but I should have said, I'm taking this to be compact. So in a compact space, you cannot have a charge, gate charge, and therefore this cannot be the case. In other words, the only possibility is that the cobordism class of the theory is zero. What about fluxes, right? Like I, I will give that as an example of the fluxes. So what happens if there are cobordism classes? Well, they have to be killed somehow. That's what, if, if we think about it. So what does that mean? You start, you start with asking, how do we compute this? Well, the problem is that we don't know exactly what structure we have in the quantum theory of gravity. So we start with a given structure and ask within that structure, are there classes? And if there are classes, it better be killed because we ignore some ingredient in that theory. So an example of it is fluxes. So if you have a theory which has fluxes, you would, for example, you have an F, and you can define the conserved current, which is the star of it. So you have D star J is zero. <laughs> And you can describe the flux as a conserved current. And you would say, well, that's fine. There's a class, which is the churn classes of that uh, bundle. But that's killed by what? By sources. In other words, if you have an F, and if you have a brain that sources it, that will kill it. So in other words, that F is actually predicts that cobordism is killed by the corresponding brain, which is, has a corresponding flux generated. That, and that, of course, we know that in the quantum gravity theory, you cannot have just fluxes with no sources, you should be able to source them out, and that's related to the fact that that's how you kill it. So the existence of brain is, is another way we would say you have to kill that class, and that's how it gets killed. So in some sense, it's related to the completeness of spectrum and string theory. If you have fluxes, you have to be able to kill them off. So I will, uh, the time is very short, so let me just give you examples, because I think, to illustrate, I think nothing is better than giving an example. Suppose we don't know, since we don't know the full structure, let me start with the bare bones of a structure. We have supersymmetry, so what is it? That means we have spinner. So let's take an oriented manifold with a spin structure. So let's talk about omega spin on various dimensions. So some of these have entered discussions in topological phases and condensed matter. So some of you may recognize various one of these in different contexts. So if you write in different dimensions what omega spin is, you get classes like z, z2, z2, 0, z, etc. So let me just concentrate on one class here, just for the fun of it. Here in dimension 4, you have a class which is z. What does that mean? Well, there's, this actually class is generated by the K3 manifold. And it's related to the fact that there's a Pontryagin number, or Pontryagin class, which characterizes them. So if they normalize, uh, this gives you the, the generated being K3. So you can, in physics language, say that there is a current which is proportional to the star of the Pontryagin class, and it's conserved, namely d star j is zero. 
<coughs> so that's the same thing as in language what I was saying in terms of the classes, there's a conserved charge. The conserved charge is related to this Pontry eigen class, so conserved form, higher form. Now, um, okay, so how, what kills it? What is the problem with this? Let's talk about a few cases. Type 2A or M theory, what happens in this case? Well, what kills it is that here I was talking about spin manifold. I'm assuming orientable manifold, but type 2A and M theory allow non-orientable manifolds, and allowing a non-orientable ingredient kills this class. Actually, it doesn't quite kill it. It kills it to an RP, which gets killed in, a, in terms of the oriented folks. But anyhow, basically, that's the ingredient that's necessary for killing it in type 2A and M theory. How about heteronic strings? Well, in heteronic stream, what kills it is that this is not an allowed compactification. What happens is that since I'm turning off gauge fields, this class actually is, 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 it wants to be gauged. There's a, there's a dual of the B field, which couples to the Pontryagin class in the console of K theory in the constant hydraulic string, and this is not zero, means that it gives you charge of this one, that's not allowed. That's the same thing as saying hydraulic string on K3 with no fluxes is not allowed, and that's we know it, it's not possible unless you have fluxes or in five brains, so this is basically not, not allowed for M hydraulic string because actually there's a gate which forbids it, so you have to get the class to be zero. And the other case is type 2B. In type 2B, it's orientable, it's, it's perfectly fine, what kills it? It better be that it's killed, so it's allowed, it's not that it's gauged, but it has to be killable. In other words, there must be a situation in type 2B for which the K3 is a boundary of one higher dimensional theory, and this you can show that it has to be a non-supersymmetric configuration, so we would not have necessarily known this. So we are predicting non-supersymmetric configuration in quantum gravity based on topological symmetries. So that's actually quite interesting and in some sense similar to the gist of this workshop and the talk we just heard that topological aspects of quantum field theories can lead to predictions about non-supersymmetric theories. And here in the quantum gravity context, the same thing is appearing. That is, topological aspects are sufficiently strong to make predictions to hardly, very highly difficult things to do and we still don't know what is exactly this compactification of the theory which would kill this K3. But it has to be killable. So uh, in the remaining, let me just a uh, few, I guess five minutes, how much time do I have? Uh, you have uh, 10 to oh. 15 minutes. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I go questions. slower than I was. I was just being too rushed. Let's say 10 plus 5. Questions. OK, excellent. So I will slow down. So let me give you another <laughs> class of examples. So, so let's go to this class, type 2 NM theory. So type 2 NM theory, we said it's not orientable so we better change our picture to pin manifolds, and in fact the, the corresponding class turns out to be pin plus. So let's look at omega D of pin plus with various dimensions. D, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. You have Z2, 0, Z2, Z2, Z16. These numbers are familiar to many of you, I assume, etc. Now, just to say, I'm not saying that this is the only structure you need to make M theory, uh, M theory work, because actually I'm assuming just just the non-oriental manifold with the spin structure. That's all with a particular plus or minus having to do the score of the parity operator. But uh, you can have more structure, like M3 allows G flux. It has this ingredient, that ingredient. And in fact, you can get more refined seeing what, what you can include with more and more ingredients. So for example, the recent paper by uh, Hopkins and Fried gives you a more sophisticated version of this for M3 where you have more ingredients of M3 added. But uh, at any stage that you start, there's going to be some extra ingredients that you may have to add. So here I'm just starting with, so we are not going to be at the end of the stage anyhow because we don't know the full formulation of what is the structure that we need. So we might as well start with this. So look at omega d of pin plus and you have these classes. What kills them? So um, actually, so let me explain what kills some of them. This one, and this one, and this one. So how could you kill the zero dimensional class? That means you want to have a point, should be a boundary of something. How could that be? Well, we know this. In fact, this is what we call Hojava within construction. Hojava within construction is precisely that R mod Z2 is a, at least at the boundary of it, is allowed compactification of M theory. So from this, we could have anticipated that there must be a domain wall in M theory, and that is consistent with the Hojava within construction. In fact, it is true that 
in these classes, you have not only uh, this oriented fold co construction in theory, but R5 mod Z2 and also R9 mod Z2 <coughs> also exist. And these will kill uh, some corresponding classes there. So some of these classes get killed this way. What are the generator of these guys? This, is a, this generator of this one is Klein bottle. And this was a Klein bottle times a circle. And this is uh, HD2, the quaternionic projective space. This one gets killed because actually if you compute, there's a condition that the number of M2, the number of M2 brains in M theory when you compact on eight manifold is related to some curvature ca characteristics plus the G flux. And you find that that characteristic is not zero for this space. So therefore, without G flux, this is inconsistent. So you have to include G flux, which I'm ignoring. So this is just like in the Rolex space, it's not allowed in this construction. So that gets thrown out. And then there are two more classes left. So again, we are now predicting that the Klein bottle should be killable. That means that there must be a, theory, a way to kill off Klein bottle with the boundary of a two plus one dimensional object in M theory with some ingredients. Now, this is, again, you can check that's not supersymmetric. The reason that amount of supersymmetry in this theory is the minimal amount of supersymmetry allowed in that dimension. And the one in one lower dimension is still the same amount. But this certainly should bring some supersymmetry. And therefore, it, must, it cannot preserve any supersymmetry, because that's the minimal it could be. So therefore, again, we would not be familiar with these. So just like the K3 example with type 2B, this one, again, is predicting non-supersymmetric domain walls or brains that will kill off this class. So let me then move on to type 2B. Type 2B is actually is, is orientable. So you, you go back to this picture, omega spin. So we talked about uh, already this class for K3. What about these other classes? So let me start with the easy one. What is the generator of this one? This turns out to be a circle. And this one turns out to be a torus. So what kills off, what, what kills off these two dimensions, these two classes? Well, the first one, the circle, is killed by, well, there are various ways of saying it, the simplest ways in the context of F theory, it's just killed by the half K3. So if you take type 2B, the, you can describe it uh, in the F theory language as some elliptic vibration. If you take elliptic vibration over a sphere, half of the sphere gives you a configuration which kills the circle, which is boundaries the circle. So therefore, this gets killed off. So this class gets killed off, and uh, and another way of saying it is in the context of perturbative boundaries that there's the oriented fold. So you can think about like pillow case where you have a certain limit of F theory would look like an oriented fold. This is the send limit where you can have an oriented fold description of it, which also another way of saying how the circle gets killed off. So circle gets killed off in the same way the torus gets killed off. So these get killed off. This is a prediction. And how about this one? Well, this one is telling you that uh, domain, there should be also a domain while killing off the point. In, in, uh, in type 2B. That is, type 2B also have, should have a D8, uh, not D8, an eight dimensional boundary, eight plus one dimensional boundary. Now, this is, sounds surprising, uh, perhaps, but again, you can show that because of the nature of the supersymmetry of type, type 2.0, nature of type 2B, this boundary domain well, must again break the old supersymmetries. So therefore, again, it's an object, if it existed, we would not have encountered. Now, there's evidence for the existence of this. Uh, there's, there's other evidence for the existence of this domain wall. But before I say that, it might sound surprising. Type 2B is chiral. So we are saying that the type 2B, a chiral theory of quantum gravity, should have a boundary, should end on a boundary, which might sound originally a little bit strange. How could you have a chiral theory ending on something? And that actually does happen even in 2D. So we do have 2D chiral theories which have boundaries. For example, very, and the 2D theory meaning there's a worksheet theory of quantum gravity. We know string theory is an example. It is quantum gravity. If you introduce B field, you can have boundaries. Though D brains are the boundaries. So therefore, D brains are allowed things. And not only that, you can be more fancy and talk about asymmetric orbifold, which left and right and look totally different. So it's really chiral. Again, has boundaries. So there's no pr problem with the chiral theories having boundaries. And this is predicting that the type to be, as, as one such example should be, a 10-dimensional theory should have a boundary. And evidence of that is uh, related to the work that uh, suggested by the work of Dissler, more uh, Fried, and more, where they were studying notions of a two-step K theory in the context of what, what is the generalization of the K theory, where you include the B field. 
And then they came up with a prediction that you need to have a dynamical field, which plays the role of a Z2 dynamical field for the B field, which interprets between type 2A and type 2B. So they came up with a picture that type 2A and type 2B must have a domain law between them, which you go from one to the other. They predicted an existence of this kind of a domain law, which of course would kill the, the, the point in K3, because if you can go from type 2B to type 2A, we know that the orientifold kills type 2A. There's a boundary. That's the descendant of the hojar witten wall, if you wish. So therefore, type 2B would have a boundary as well. So, so this is beginning to be a coherent set of uh, statements about symmetries uh, which kill off, which have to be killed off one way or the other, and gives us insight into non-perturbative aspects involving non-supersymmetric situations based on topology. Very much in the sense of topological phases, the statement is that the gravity cannot have an interesting topological phase. That is, all the phases can go from one to the other by dynamical degrees of freedom. You cannot add parameters or phases into quantum gravity to distinguish these things because that would be non-dynamical. Everything that's allowed in a quantum gravity context is a dynamical field, and therefore you couldn't freeze it. Freezing is something you can do in quantum field theory, but not in quantum gravity. And this is the, the nature of the beast. So I'll stop here. Thank you. Consider the manifold with spin or pin plus structure. Do you consider the manifold as a smooth differentiable manifold? Can yeah, so, so many of these things be... exactly are not correct, correct, exactly the point. So you're making a very good point that in these categories you have to relax them to kill them. Right. You, you make a singular, non smooth, which ones are allowed ingredients is not a priori clear in string theory. But one still can consider all these group for non triangle for topological manifold. That yeah, so, so each category you have to modify it to get the, to get the extra category which is allowed. And whatever you end up, if you get the full category, it better be zero at the end. The statement is that. The statement is that if you don't get zero, that means you're not at the end of the row. Of course, getting zero does not guarantee that you're at the end, but at least having a non-trivial class means there, there's something missing. The fact that you started out with a Z for your last example, this domain ball and type 2B, does this mean this new domain ball would have to have an integer charge? So not necessarily, not necessarily. So there's, there are ways of thinking. So for example, you can have, uh, let me say what, what's a good example for this. So for hydraulic string, for example, similar classes exist that give you like a Z, but we think it would actually give you junctions. So the junctions of objects, so it's not an object necessarily, it could be junctions of other brains. So I'm not saying that there are dynamical brains that I'm predicting necessarily. It could be configurations of brains that you already have in configuration that you thought is not allowed. So, so it would be extremely interesting to know exactly what, what kind of specific ones you can get from these quantum numbers. Yes? Just I'm going to follow up on my question. So if we take the, uh, the uh, 2B to 2A transition picture, um, if I put two of them on top of each other, I just go back. On top of each other meaning continue me? Yeah, I mean, if I just yeah. go from 2B to 2A back to 2B. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But it's, but it's not putting many of those things on top of each other. It's not That's right. No, you, you can you can add, you can, if you want to get from, no, the type 2B to type 2A, this one was a Z2 value. Oh, that was just a Z2 one. I'm sorry. Yeah, this one was only Z2. Yes. I got, I got yes. yes. So, Gabriel and Berkman discussed this number of yes brains. Could you make a connection between this? Uh, I'm not familiar which work of them we are talking about, but. Cabardew and Berkman? Or? Well, there are non PPS brains, so that's for sure allowed. I mean, some of these non PPS brains might show up here as killing some classes, like yes. also Sen had non BPS brains and other things. So I ex we, all, we expect some of these ingredients must also come up as interesting objects here. We haven't been able to use any of them to kill off classes I just told you. For example, I don't know what kills off Klein bottle in M theory. I don't know what kills off type 2B point in type 2B or K3 in type 2B. So we're making a number of these kind of predictions that I, I can give you a, a more comprehensive list. But we don't know how to kill them. We should, they should be killed, but we don't know how. Uh, what do you know about the dynamics along these brains? Very good question. We don't know much. In fact, they may not even be brains. They may be junctions. It's matter, but that's, are, yeah, are we, there localized degrees of freedom that sit there? Or? There, there may not be. They're not necessarily. Like orientifolds, you can put D brains or not. Orientifolds, they not have degrees of freedom, but source charge. So there could be just like orientable planes. Some of them are orientable planes. For example, the ones that kill the uh, pin plus, or orientable five plane, or orientable R5 mod Z2, and all that are orientable planes. You may or may not put charges there, but that's up to you. These spinners of the, of the SO32 string, these massive things that are do those fit in this? So those are related to sense uh, uh, non-supersymmetric brains, and they could show up, but so far none of them have been 
we have been hoping that some of them will show up as killing some of these classes. So far, we don't have any of those showing up. Hi, so these bodies in Google can be can be uh, you know that's uh, can be compute for any larger dimension, larger than eleven or twelve. Yes. Does they still play some role? For well, some of them play a role for anomalies, for example, it was recently uh, so, studied. So in the and, about, but but up to up, we expect that all of the ones at least up to twelve would be killed in M theory in particular. The rest of them, 13, 14, 15, I don't know what you want to do with those. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's thank you for again. Thank you.